you made it to video number four in the Ford 8N, 9N, 2N engine rebuild series. In this video, we are going to put the engine all back together, the tractor back together, and we're even gonna hear it run at the very end. So follow along with us. Just remember before you put the cover on the end of the engine here that your seal here is a rope seal and you have to get this little sheet metal oil slinger on. That helps keep the oil away from the front seal and not have such a bad leak in the front. Also, we've put the in play ring in the end of the cam here and I just put a little grease on it to help hold it in there until I get the cover on. So on the cover, there's two dollars. One dollar up here on top of the block, one by Rachel helps get things going. We put a little sealer on this end of the gasket material to help hold it in place until we get it on. I'm gonna use a Phillips screwdriver just to help get things lined up here as we start. And once you get the dowels in place, it just kind of locks right in pretty good. It's a good idea to get all of your bolts started a little bit before you tighten any of them up all of the way. So we just set our oil pan down. We had our gasket in there first and we used that same gasket sealant on the oil pan gasket. I believe there are 14 bolts that go all along the bottom of the oil pan here. When you set your oil pan down, you really have to be careful of your oil pump. This is probably the step where the oil pump gets damaged. So set it down carefully. Make sure that you don't damage your oil pump. You'll see that it comes right here. Once I have all the bolts from my oil pan, situated. I'm going to put my new drain plug and screen into here and there's a little gasket that goes behind it as well. I took my flywheel to an automotive machine shop and had it resurfaced. You can see how nice it looks in here. The reason why you would want to have your flywheel resurfaced is because the clutch plate has rivets on it and as it wears, it makes grooves into the flywheel. My flywheel was actually quite grooved. If you discover that your flywheel is grooved from your clutch disc, then you would want to have it resurfaced as well. It's normally a pretty uh, affordable thing that you can do at an automotive repair facility. You just drop off the flywheel they resurface it and you come back and pick it up it's really simple at this point you do need to also inspect your ring gear make sure that all the teeth are intact if you discover you need a new ring gear we do offer that part to you I have chosen to put a brand new clutch kit into my tractor you can see I have the new throw out bearing installed here I have the pilot bearing in the flywheel and then I have a new clutch disc and pressure plate on here I have gone to a lot of work to repair this tractor and I don't want to put used questionable parts back into the tractor. The clutch was working on this tractor before we took it apart, but taking it apart and inspecting it, I can see that it's very worn. Even my pressure plate shows a lot of groove on it. So I don't want to take the risk and put those back in. In addition to that, when I move my throat bearing, I do hear a little bit of a chatter and there's also a catch right there. It catches a little bit. So. For the, all of those reasons, I have decided to put a new clutch kit into my tractor. They're also really affordable too for these N-series tractors. If you need a, more help on a clutch replacement, I have a separate video on my channel here. You can look for that video and watch it. It goes into a lot more detail about throwout bearing, pilot bearing replacement and such. So make sure you look for that video if you are going to replace your clutch as well. I put a little bit of anti-seize onto the splines right here just to help it go together smoothly. When I put my two parts together I'm making sure that they go together easily I am NOT going to force it at all and I'm going to make sure that it goes together with ease I'm not going to put my bolts in and make the bolts do the work of bringing the two halves together I'm going to do that myself and make sure that it all goes together easily so that nothing gets damaged upon that reinsertion and at that point you can see that I have some dowels here too, some lineup tools to help me get it into place so with all of that I'm ready to put the engine onto the transmission mission. The next step is to put my front pulley onto the engine here. I'm choosing to put a brand new pulley on. Here's why. This is my original pulley, which is a sheet metal material that can bend. And on the back side, I do have a new seal here and my new seal would line up to this grooved portion here, which would probably make a leak. So in order to keep my tractor dry, and sealed up, I'm going to put a new pulley on the front. 
There is a notch on the back of here. If you look inside here, you'll see the notch that has to line up just so. These four bolts are for if your tractor has a front pump, front hydraulic pump, like for a loader. If you don't need those, you just disregard them. My notch is right here, so I'm going to get that lined up so that it will drive on. And then I'm using a rubber hammer with a steel end to drive this on. Once I have this driven on, I'm going to put my crankshaft nut into place and then the front axle will be ready to come onto the tractor. I have my head gasket set into place. I chose to spray mine with a copper gasket sealer and I would recommend that you do the same. It's a high temperature sealer that is special for head gaskets and we're working with an old block and an old head so anything I can do to help it seal is to my advantage. Normally head gaskets are directional. The smooth side should go towards the black and the rolled side would come up towards the head. When I assemble an engine like this, I like to put number one cylinder up and on the power stroke. That helps me when I go to put my distributor on that everything's in time, I know that it's at top dead center. With that, I'm ready to set my head down into place. I chose to use two studs here to, just to help me get it down easily and kind of use those as guides. Early 9N, 2N tractors and early 8Ns would have studs. Later 8Ns would have bolts like this. With those into place, if, if it gets stuck, you could use a rubber hammer. Mine slid on really easily, but if yours gets a little bit hung up, you can gently use a rubber hammer. Not too much force, you could damage your head, but if you do get stuck there, yours doesn't slide on as easily as mine, keep that in mind. So with that, I'm ready to put my head bolts in. I'm going to spray the ends of these with some lube because I don't want to put them in dry, and then I'm also spraying the nuts that I'm going to use. Then I'm going to just start them all the way around my head. I did check my head for warpage. You can use a straight, end, a straight edge to put across the bottom of the head to make sure that it's not warped at all. And that would be a good idea for you, especially if you are doing this repair because you blew a head gasket or you found coolant in the engine oil or vice versa, then you definitely want to inspect your head, probably a little more so than if you're doing this repair just because your tractor lost oil pressure. Either way though, inspect your head, don't put it back on if it's cracked or warped at all. Once I have these head bolts on, I will go back and torque them. If you are using the studs, then you will torque them at 50 to 55 foot-pounds of torque. If you're using bolts, will be 65 to 70 foot-pounds of torque. When you torque your head down, I would recommend setting your torque wrench at half value first and tightening all your bolts at that half value and then going back around at the full torque spec for your engine. The book says to start in the center and work your way out. Normally you work your way out in an X pattern and that is important as you tighten down the head for both the half spec and the full spec to start in the center and work your way out in an X pattern around the engine until they're all tightened up to the torque specification. I have much of my tractor reassembled. I wanna point out a few of the things that I've put on. The first here is you can see that I chose to install a brand new manifold. This manifold that we sell is a very high quality manifold. When you shop for manifolds online, you're gonna notice lower and higher quality manifolds. We only sell the higher quality that fits easily and comes with brass nuts for the attachment. Because this is hot and it expands, opens and closes, I like to have the brass nuts on this manifold. Also, I use that same copper sealer that we used on the head gasket for the manifold gaskets as well. I did go ahead and rebuild my carburetor. Oh, it was nasty inside. If you need to rebuild your carburetor, we have a separate tutorial that goes through all the steps for that. So that's available to you if you need help on that. On the front of the tractor, you can see that I have my fan, my um, water pump and my distributor all installed here. I also chose to put a brand new belt on. I'm not interested in putting a used belt back onto the tractor since that's such an affordable part to upgrade. When I put the head on, remember I talked about having your number one cylinder at top dead center? I did that so that when I put my distributor on, number one cylinder is right here and that wire 
comes all the way up to number one, which is always the cylinder that's closest to the radiator. And then I followed my firing order the rest of the way around the distributor. It's important for you to do the same and pay attention to your firing order and your distributor. You want to do that number one, whether you have a tractor like mine with a front distributor or if you have a side distributor. Either way, follow it, start with um, cylinder number one. On the other side of the tractor, I did put 1540 engine oil into the tractor and then in the front of the radiator, I added antifreeze as well. I put a new cap on and this has the filter inside. Mine was really as dented and beat up, so I just decided to put a brand new one on top of my oil filler compartment there. With that, I want to talk to you about the governor. My governor, when this tractor was running, it just was really sluggish, especially under a load. It didn't have, I'd call it like get up and go. It was just flat out sluggish. So I am choosing to put a brand new governor onto the tractor. You can see that when I spin this around, the arm comes in like it should. And I've chosen to go with a brand new governor. Most of the time when governors wear out, the balls that roll around inside this shell leave a groove inside the shell of the governor. So if you put a governor rebuild kit in and your shell is bad, you aren't solving the problem. So I have found that it's easier to just replace the whole entire governor it is a more expensive part, so this is probably something that you only want to replace if your tractor needs it. However, a lot of tractors, once they're this old, struggle to get up and go, and a lot of times the governor is what causes that sluggish behavior in your tractor. This is an AN governor, and you can see on this side that it has the spot for the tack drive. My tractor doesn't have a tachometer since it's an earlier 8N, so I'm just going to leave this plug right on. This inlet here is where my oil line goes. If uh, you have a 9N or a 2N, the governor will look slightly different. There's only one arm that's in a different position, but the same things are true about a governor being sluggish, whether you have an 8N or a 9N. I want to caution you when you install your governor, whether you put your old governor back on or a new governor, make sure that your bolts are short enough. If you use too long of a bolt and put it through here, it could catch on the camshaft and cause you really bad problems in the engine. So make sure that your bolts are short enough. I'll just show you how short mine are through the casing here. You don't want to use something that's super long. It'll really damage your engine, especially after you've gone to all this work to rebuild it. You don't want to make a little mistake like that. There is a gasket that goes behind the governor here. And once you have that intact, you can just set this right up into place. On the front of your engine, you need to install your oil pressure relief valve. It's a two-piece set like this, and it slides right in up here next to the distributor. And then this cap goes on top of it. So let me slide that in there, just like that. This cap takes a 15 16 wrench, and it's spring-loaded as you push it in. So you just put it right over top of the spring, get it started by hand, and then tighten it up. I have enough of my tractor assembled that I'm ready to start it up. So here we go. The first thing that I'm watching is the oil pressure gauge. I want to make sure that this tractor has good oil pressure and I see that it climbs right up, which is excellent. The next thing I'm gonna do is check for any leaks. So I'm just looking alongside here just to make sure that nothing is leaking out, that the manifold is clear from the gas line that I put back on. And I'm happy with my first initial inspection. We'll go back and do some fine tuning. Maybe the carburetor needs a little bit of adjustment since we rebuilt that. If you need help fine tuning your carburetor, then watch our carburetor video. Hopefully your tractor will run as good as this one when you are finished with this repair. You know, whenever I finish a video or I'm wrapping up a video, at this point I think of so many more things that I could include in the video, but we are limited to time. You don't want to watch a video that lasts for forever. So if you need some additional help, maybe you still have some questions, you're a little uneasy about how to do the repair, an additional resource that would be helpful to you would be a shop manual like this one. This is published by INT. It's available on our website. It's specific to 8N, 9N, and 2N tractors. This will give you specifications and additional help beyond what is included in this video. And it also covers all components of the tractor, not just the engine. If you are going to attempt a repair on your tractor and you don't have a manual, please stop and purchase a manual first. You need this as a resource to help you follow along. No matter how experienced of a mechanic you are, you need a manual.
This should be the first manual that you purchase. The INT manual is a great baseline place to start. Once you have that purchased, if you want to expand your library, we do offer a couple other manuals. This is a parts catalog. This has part schematics and part numbers in it. I'll just open it up so you can see it a little bit here. This is helpful and it just gives more information than what's included in the INT manual. It's just designed to be an additional resource to you. Another per, um, manual that you might like to have is this service manual that is a reprint of the original Ford manual that they published back in the 1950s. So if you want this, we offer that reprint on our website. Some of you might be watching this video and you might say, why is she doing all that work to such an ugly tractor? Uh, let me t explain my reasoning. I think that mechanical work should be done on a tractor before a paint job is done. I have seen some people do a paint job and then they have to go back and try to fix something and they end up damaging the paint while they do that repair or it leaks while it's all painted up beautifully. So please do your mechanical work first. And then once you have all the mechanical repairs finished that you want to finish, you can then paint it. If you need some coaching on painting your tractor, we offer this video, How to Paint Your Tractor, um, where my dad explains the painting process. He also talks about doing body work, how to mix your paint. So it'll be really helpful to you if you um, want to attempt a paint job on your tractor once you're finished with the mechanical repairs. One other way that we can help you is through technical support. Maybe you have a specific question and you would like to ask uh, one of our mechanics. We offer that opportunity to you. On our website, there's a tab that says tech support where you can schedule a phone call with one of our technicians that are extremely knowledgeable about Ford tractors and bounce ideas off, get some help with troubleshooting and uh, help you on your tractor. There is a small fee for that service. As you can imagine, we can't talk to everybody and give them free advice about their tractor all day long or we would never get to repairing tractors. So there is a fee to help offset the cost that it costs us to provide that service to you, but it's small and I think that that you will realize that it's definitely worth it for the help. We help customers all the time who are so grateful for the extra coaching that they can receive one-on-one. -on -one. So you can schedule that on our website if you need it. I hope that this tutorial is very helpful to you. When you are ready to purchase parts, please buy them on my website, which is farmtractorrepair.com. Also, you can click the subscribe button underneath this video as that will give you a notification every time a new video is released.